Good afternoon. Thank you for letting me present our work at this conference. I am going to share with you our experience in the use of alpelicid in patients with vascular anomalies. To start, I am going to give you some insights about the pathologies produced by PIX3CA mutation, including lymphatic malformations, and how this new inhibitor has been used in the last few years. So the acronym PROS refers to PIX3CA related overgrowth spectrum, and it was first coined by Kathleen Oil in 2015. The term PROS encompasses a group of rare diseases characterized by malformations associated with overgrowth and produced by PIX3CA mutations. These mutations are present only in some cells of the body, so the abnormalities produced may appear in different tissues and different locations in the body. Due to this mosaicism, these patients saw a high clinical heterogeneity. Not only they have an obvious physical deformity, but also suffer many complications such as pain, recurrent infections, risk of thromboembolism, bleeding, or functional impairment. The management of these patients included the bulking, aggressive surgical resections, sclerotherapy or laser, among others, although these treatments presented a high rate of recurrences and sequelae. Within the group of PROS, we can find simple macrodactyly, facial infiltrating lipomatosis, or an isolated lymphatic malformation. But we can also find true syndromes such as megalencephalic capillary malformation, or Clough syndrome, with different phenotypes. To avoid the sequelae from the more aggressive treatments and decrease the morbid mortality, in the last years, physicians are betting on the pharmacological treatment. Although many of these patients have previously received cyrolimus, the current objective is to use targeted therapies. Since all of these pathologies present PIX3CA mutations, the logical step is using selective PIX3CA inhibitor, such as alpelicib. Alpelicib is a specific inhibitor of P3K, primarily of its alpha subunit, that has demonstrated antitumoral activity and was first approved for breast cancer. In 2018, it was used for the first time in patients with vascular anomalies. The French group of Canot gave alpelicib to an animal model, and after that, to 19 patients with PROS, finding reduction of size of vascular anomalies and decrease of overgrowth. After these promising results, the pharmaceutical company Novartis decided to open a program and give alpelicib as compassionate use to those PROS patients with severe and progressive disease. In 2019, a retrospective study was performed to study the response of those patients with alpelicid on compassionate use, considering a positive response when there was a reduction of at least 20% in volume of the target lesion. 57 patients were included from countries from all over the world. Only 37% achieved the primary objective of 20% volume reduction but almost 75% experienced some reduction in the target lesion. Irrespective of the size, all patients presented great improvement in all symptoms. Most patients presented adverse events, although only 38% were considered related to alpelicy. The most frequent were diarrhea, hyperglycemia, and mucositis. In 2021, a clinical trial was started, a double-blind study to assess the efficacy, safety, and pharmacokinetics of alpelicid in PROS patients. This clinical trial is still ongoing. Improvement is considered when there is a reduction of PROS lesions, when there is a clinical improvement in signs and symptoms, and when there is an absence of severe adverse events. In the meantime, in April 22, the Food and Drug Administration from the United States approved alpelicid for its use in PROS patients, thanks to the results from the retrospective study and the preliminary results from the clinical trial. We are still waiting for its approval in Europe. 
after this long but hopefully not boring introduction, I am going to share our experience with Alpalisib in PROS patients. And I will try to focus a bit more on our patients with lymphatic malformations. So far we have treated 61 patients, 33 females and 28 males. The starting age of Alpalisib was 11 years old. Mean time of treatment has been 18 months. Pediatric patients' starting dose was between 50 and 100 mg, while adult patients started between 150 and 200. Over the follow-up, dose has been slightly increased. We classified patients according to their phenotype, depending on the presence of vascular malformations and overgrowth, but always considering overgrowth only when there was bone impairment. We had six patients with lipomatosis. We had five patients with facial infiltrating lipomatosis. We had nine patients with lymphatic malformations. Three of them had giant lymphatic malformations involving head and neck, and they needed a tracheostomy in the neonatal period. Five of them had diffuse lymphatic malformations in the upper limb. And the last one presented a generalized lymphatic malformation, DLA, with retroperitoneal and lower limb involvement. We had 23 patients with combined malformations, 13 of them also associating overgrowth of the affected limb. We had 13 patients with different degrees of club syndrome. We also had one club of syndrome with a characteristic capillary malformation in the lower lip and lymphatic malformation in the tongue. And we have three patients with megalencephalic capillary malformation syndrome with the characteristic capillary malformation in filtrum and nose. Half of our patients present variants for hotspots found in cancer, similar to literature. The most frequent symptoms in all groups were deformity, pain and inflammation. 50% of our patients underwent at least one surgical procedure while 10% required sclerosis. Before Apalisib, 27% received another pharmacological therapy, all of them Saralimus. Regarding the response, 75% of patients presented improvement, all of them in symptoms and most of them also in size. Almost 23% remain stable in terms of symptoms. And only two patients presented progression, both with increase of size of the affected limb due to the lymphedema, but improvement in the rest of symptoms. We also evaluated other parameters of response, such as the decrease of the dimer. This number indicates the grade of coagulopathy and intralesional thrombosis and was elevated in almost 45% of our patients. After atalisib, the dimer was reduced in 80% of them. Lastly, we have to report one death due to pulmonary thromboembolism related to underlying pathology and not related to alpalisib. We have seen that the most reduction in size of the pros lesions happened when they were pure lipomatosis as you can see in these patients with lipomatosis in the back and neck. The same happened for this patient with reduction of the lesion in the buttock and leg. Regarding pure lymphatic malformations, we have seen some reduction in size, like this boy with a huge malformation in neck and tongue, that achieved the cannulation and been able to maintain the tongue inside the mouth. Patients with lymphatic malformations have also referred decrease in the severity and frequency of episodes of pain and inflammation, reducing the need of analgesics and antibiotics. In combined malformations, reduction in size was milder, but symptoms did also improve. The patient in the left referred disappearance of lymphorrhea and bleeding from the lymphatic plebs. The patient in the right referred disappearance of deadly pain without need of analgesics, 
and also improvement in mobility, being able to walk and dance without fatigue. Patients with Clough syndrome have also presented improvement. This patient underwent surgical resection of combined malformation in right flank during early childhood, but Alpalisib has reduced the lesions in back and buttock, removing the need of another surgery. In terms of adverse events, 65% of our patients presented at least one side effect related to alpelicy, although none were severe grade 3 or 4. Most frequent adverse event was alopecia, followed by diarrhea, other dermatological disruptions, and loss of appetite. Even if hyperglycemia is considered one of the most prevalent side effects, only 8 of our patients presented it, and metformin was needed in only 4 of them. In general, adult patients presented more adverse effects than pediatric patients. 12 patients have finished the treatment, most with improvement after 2 years of treatment. In these patients, we made a progressive reduction of alpelisib after a consensual decision. To conclude, Alpelisib is another option in the management of pix 3 ca patients that present progressive disease despite other treatments. This does not mean that every patient on Cyrolimus should change to Alpelisib if they are responding. And of course, we cannot forget about surgery and sclerosis. With the initial data that we have, we can establish that Alpelisib is safe in children and adults, although there is risk of mild side effects. Lastly, we still don't know which patients are the ones that should be treated, when, for how long, and at what dosage. Hopefully, clinical trials will answer these questions in the near future. Thank you very much for your attention. I am happy to respond to questions.